bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come together on your Sabbath day, Lord God. Today you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more about your word. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us the understanding, Heavenly Father, not just to understand your word, Lord God, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 The title of today's lesson is, Jesus Will Sit on David's Throne at His Second Coming. Jesus will sit on David's throne at his second coming. As we realize, like I said, when we read throughout the scriptures, our last king was Zedekiah. And after our last king being Zedekiah, God said that no one will be able to sit on David's throne until whose right it is to come sit on his throne. And when we read, like I said, as we go over the scriptures, we're going to see that that throne belongs to Christ. But not only that, though, we're going to also know, like I said, before he was even established at David's throne, he was, Jesus, God, he was already our king anyway. He was our king before Saul was our first king. Right. Like I said, so like I said, so it was already, like I said, the kingdom, it already belonged to him already. So he was already our king. You know what I'm saying? Like that, but then, you know, our ancestors want to say that, you know, uh, we, we want to be like the other nations. We want to have a king like them. So, you know, so God got angry, but hey, so, you know, he gave him Saul and things like that. But we're, we're going to go over, go over the kings. Uh, the different kings and stuff that we have, but then we're going to go ahead and realize that our true king was Jesus and is Jesus. So we're going to start this um, lesson out in 1 Samuel 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7. 1 Samuel chapter 8. We're going to read 1 through 7. When you get there, go ahead. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. You see that, though? So you remember, Samuel was also our judge. He was a judge as well, but you see... That his sons didn't walk in the same way as Samuel did. So that's why, so he was like, look, we don't want your sons over us, man, because your sons out here, you know what I'm saying, living, living crazy. Perverted. So that perverted So that's why they said, look, make us a king like all these other nations. But I'm pretty sure maybe if his sons maybe walked like how Samuel walked, they may have not have made that statement. But by them making that statement, that lets you know that his sons, like, said, look, your sons don't even qualify to rule over us. It's going to explain it even more. Read verse 4. And then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves See? together and came to Samuel, un came to Samuel unto uh, Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Right. See. So yeah. So his sons are walking in the ways of the Lord. Go ahead. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Mm. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. Well, right, I, I, can, I, can, I see why Samuel got mad because of that. Mm -hmm. But also, Samuel should also know, too, the way his, his sons were walking upright as well, though. So Samuel right. should have felt some type of way. You know, like, so like like how Eli and his sons were doing the same thing. You know, they, right. didn't, they didn't walk upright. You know, Lord, it's crazy. Aaron how, and his sons didn't Right, that. exactly. So it's like, dang, it's like you're doing right. But are you not raising up your children under the admonition of the Lord? Like, why are they walking like that? Right. So he got mad about that. So that's why. But we're going to see uh, who really got mad after this, though. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, and I should not reign over them. So he's telling you, he said, look, they're not really mad at you, Samuel. They're really mad at me. You know what I'm saying? That's what you pretty much tell them. Go ahead. Look, that was it. That was it. Now let's go ahead and go to uh, 1 Samuel 12. Now God's going to go ahead and explain, explain to them all the things that he did for them when he was their king. We're going to read 1 Samuel 12. We're going to read verse 1 and then 7 through 12. Go ahead. Now this right here, like I said, this, this is when he's already anointed, he already uh, anointed Saul as king already, right here. So we're going to go and read that. Go ahead, 1 Samuel 12, we're going to read 1 and then 7 to 12. Go ahead. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. 
verse 7 through 12. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord, of all the righteous acts of the Lord, where did he, where he did to you and to your father. So he's going to go over all the goodness that he did, but like, look, y'all still want the king now, but I'm going to show you all the things that I did for you when I was king. Oh, wait, go ahead, verse 8. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when he said, and when, I'm sorry, and when they forgot the Lord, there's God, he sold them into the hand of Caesarea, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth. Ash uh -huh. mm -hmm. Go ahead. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and we will serve thee. Especially when you read the book of Judges. I mean, it's so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Every yeah. single time. Lord... Lord, please help right, us because... Uh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, every time, like I said, he was just doing that. He would always raise up a judge like you know, Barack, mm -hmm. uh, Gideon, Samson, you know what I'm saying, like that, to get him up out of there because he all because they were always turned to another guy. Like, you'll see it would be like in 70 years they were faithful right. to the Lord and after that, turn then they turn they away. Turn wicked and they turn wicked again. again. Exactly. Go ahead. Um, um, well, well, he wasn't ruling over them. He was just a judge over them. He was like, appointed uh, yeah. to do God's Yeah, yeah, because God was still king over them, but he wasn't the judge. He was, the judge was, a judge is different than a king. You know what I'm saying? Because king was, he was a ruler. Yeah, it's, it was a difference. You know what I'm It's a difference. Well, I like think I said, that's more so like a judge and stuff. He pointed out and stuff and he. Try to correct Yeah, he would try to correct You got anything on that, uh, Isaiah? Yeah, they would hear what he would hear. Like, well, yeah, I'm like, would have like, uh, like uh, uh, pretty much. I think a king would have like pretty much like a sovereignty. Yeah, sovereignty. Yeah, they can so much more yeah. like a, a judge. But a judge did. Yeah, judge, yeah, judge didn't have the sovereignty or anything no. like that. Like See, a judge could force taxes on you and different no, no, things. Or form an uh, army and even, or take 10% of your form and stuff like a king. Right, yeah, like the king did. The king could yeah. Yeah. You, you had to pay tribute to the yeah, king. Yeah, pay tribute to Yeah, and in, in, in that particular context, I mean, we know, we know that uh, the word judge right there is the judge, govern, vindicate. Punish, act as a lawgiver, but we know in the book of Judges, those particular judges, they weren't necessarily there to give the law, but they were there to be deliverers. They were there to actually judge the uh, nations that were coming up against it. Mm, okay, I see that. Good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, they like did. some of the prophets used to go and give uh, news and stuff from the Lord, I guess, prophets. But then here, yeah, they, they judge. judge. Be different. They, yeah, they, they judge. Go, they went to go slay people with jawbone on the ass. Right, like Samson. Yeah, like, he were, killed a thousand. A thousand with a, with a job on the ass. So he was judging the Philistines. He used him to judge the Philistines, right? I got what you're saying. Yeah. And like Gideon, you know, how he just had the 300 of them. And they killed all, they wiped out all those five kings. But God used them as judgment to wipe out those nations that were oppressing Israel. Wasn't it the judges also that prayed to God that there would not be rain? Several days on Israel or something? No, well, that was that was Elijah. That was Elijah. Elijah yeah, that's, that's that was right for three and a half years. Yeah, yeah, for three and a half years. Yeah. But I know Barack and Deborah went. Uh, they went to exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Barack and Deborah. Yeah, and they went to war. They yeah, they went to war. war exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Verse eleven. Yeah, verse eleven. Uh huh. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel. And delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwell safe. Mm -hmm. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God mm -hmm. was your king. He was our king already. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and go to um let's go ahead and go to first Samuel fifteen. Oh, it says 16 on this. It's on the side, to the right. Oh, okay. 1 Samuel 15, 10 through 34. Because this is right here, because I was going to go there, but I was like, but what I want to do is show you how 
Samuel disobeyed him. Because see, as soon as 1 Samuel 16, that was showing how he about to anoint David. But I want to show you what Samuel did to how why God took his uh, anointing from him. So I want to show that. Samuel Saul. I'm sorry, Saul. Saul, I'm sorry, yeah. I was like, dang, Samuel. No, 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 I'm sorry, Saul. I'm sorry, Saul. <laughs> First Samuel 15, 10 through 34. <laughs> 1 Samuel 15, 10 through 34. All right, go ahead. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It rep repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel. And behold, he set up, he set him up a place, and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. <laughs> and That's Samuel what said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing? Of the oxen which I hear. Remember, God told him to wipe kill every everything. kill everything and the king as well. Right, right. Don't bring any sheep, no no plunder, no nothing. But he says, so "Why am I hearing the bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear?" Go ahead, verse fifteen. And Saul said, "They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and, and of the oxen mm -hmm. to sacrifice unto the Lord." Thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will let I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. Mm, mm, mm. And he said unto him, Say on. All right, say what you got to say. Tell me what the Lord said. Watch what you're going to tell him. Go ahead, verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee over, I'm sorry, anointed thee king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, of the, the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoils sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of the ram. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Mm. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed from the commandment of the Lord and thy word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now here you are, you're supposed to be king. You have complete autonomy over the people. But here you are, you feared the people. What kind of king are you? You know what I'm saying? You, I you think that was just an excuse. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was an excuse, yeah. But like I said, but the point is, that's not an excuse you want to get to God, no, though. But, but, but see, in verse 21, he said, but the people took. Right. He, say, he, tried, he tried to blame it on he blamed the people. He said, but, the, but he's but king. He's, he's king. He's I know, he, but I'm he makes a decree. He has yeah, authority. I know, I know, he ain't a judge. Saying, <laughs> that's why he's saying that the people, and that's why he can say he's what he's But he still he brought, he still brought Anak to the king of Amalek. He was supposed to, he was supposed to kill him too. But so that he was supposed to kill him too, and now he bring the blood of the sheep. So he he did what he was supposed to do, even though he didn't bring the sheep and all that. He was supposed to have the king killed, Amen. Right, exactly. But he didn't. Right. He brought him with him, so he was still wrong in his sight as well. That's just like the fall in the garden between Adam and Eve. What did, what did Adam say? He said, this woman that you right. gave me. Right. All he did and was, was just, he was just throwing the people right. under the bus. Yeah. That's, that's, oh, yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. Yeah. saying. He was throwing them when he was saying that they, I was saying that he used the point that the people took it. But they said, they they like, the king. 
There you go. The bus stop here. He has to go. Yes. He could have filibustered. He could have filibustered that. And like Samuel said, it's better. I said, obedience is greater than sacrifice. There you go. At the end of the whole thing and stuff, he's supposed to be obedient to God. Exactly. Right. That's what he says. Go ahead. Oh, Divas. Okay. Okay. Verse 25 now. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me. That I may worship the Lord. Watch this stuff. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, mm. for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over See, Israel. See, God don't play, man. You know what I'm saying? You, right, reprobate, you ain't gonna just keep doing stuff like that. You know, people are like you ain't you ain't a fitting up king. He hasn't been, he hasn't been obedient, I mean disobedient so many times. That's what I'm saying before. One more time. Hey, come, hey, look, come on, let's pray nah, for stuff. Nah. Like I said, like God is merciful, but after a while you keep you keep doing wrong and get some Hey, like, you know what I'm saying? the last straw. There you go, it was the last straw. Go ahead, mm -hmm. verse 27. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and ripped it. He ripped it. He was sad now. Now all of a sudden he's weeping, he weeping now. He probably wanted sackcloth and all that kind of stuff. Go ahead. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and hath given it to a neighbor of thine. That is better than thou. He's talking about David. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And also, the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man he, that he should repent. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. Mm. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then said Samuel, bring you hither to me, Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Yeah, Agag. I was calling him Agag earlier. Agag, go ahead. And Agag came unto him delicately. He came to him, so he came to him cheerfully like, hey, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, you all right? Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and Agag said, surely right, right. the bitterness of death is past. See, surely your business of death is passed. Like, I know you don't want to kill me now after all this was going on. It's all right. Now, what you doing? What's up, kid, folks? Hey, we no. good? <laughs> yeah, we good? Go ahead. Uh, 33. 33. And Samuel said, Surely the bitterness as thy sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. Mm. Wow. And Samuel <laughs> hewed Agag in pieces before in pieces. Child, like, before the Lord in Gilgal. Slicing and dicing. Go ahead. <laughs> then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Mm. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Go ahead, next chapter over. Samuel 16 and 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from the rejoining of, over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Beth Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. He said, Miller, man, you better stop crying stop over him. I done told you about him. He said, he, but see, you know, Saul felt some kind of connection because that was his, you know, the first king that he anointed. So he felt some kind of way, you know, it's human nature. But God's like, look, man, leave him alone. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to make mention of that. It's, it's amazing to see how how much compassion uh, Samuel had for Saul, even mm -hmm. though Saul was, was disobedient. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, you know, it's kind of like, like yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was. There you go. First king and everything. Yeah, Ruth, yeah. They, they but were. I also had heard, you know, I had heard it said that Saul was like a head taller than every other man and stuff. Yeah, yeah he, he was. was he, looked, he, he, he had that appearance. He had the appearance of a king, that, you yeah. Know, the king. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and among other nations and stuff, they said, you know, he looked fair among other kings yeah. and stuff. Yeah, he probably about like LeBron James height. Everybody yeah, else about. Right. Right. <laughs> did y'all see how gangster Samuel was, though? Yeah, I him a piece. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. But he said, he said, he said, surely the anger is past. Nah, I ain't past. Look, guys, you're supposed to die. He said, I'll make you womanless. I mean, childless. And, it's, uh. and, and just like, you know, the fact that he was a judge, uh, because of the fact that Agag, what it said, yeah. he killed a lot of Israelite women. And all exactly. There you go. He made a lot of judges. There you go. So God was judging that nation. There you go. Exactly. And see, that's the thing about it and stuff. God knew the stuff. 
that his his uh, a, a, a king Agag. And you know Amalek. You know who that is? The grandson of Esau. Ooh. That's the grandson of Esau. He, they're Edomites. They're, they're from the lineage of the Dukes of Edom. Mm. Amalek. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. We go ahead and read verse uh, eleven through thirteen. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said. There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sin and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and with all of a beauty, beautiful countenance, and good, goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Praise God. We're going to go to, uh, around this age, he was like around maybe 16 or 17 when he got anointed. Now we're going to go ahead and go to 2 Samuel uh, 5 and read 1 through 10. Uh, what does here mean? Does it mean like here? Like, it's here. Hold on, wait, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go ahead and go to 2 Samuel 5. 2 Samuel 5. And 2 Samuel 5. We're going to read 1 through 10. Well, well, before you read that, I just wanted to go ahead. read that, that last verse after where it said, The Spirit of the Lord came upon David. Uh -huh. Right after that, it says in verse uh, 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm -hmm. and an evil spirit from the Lord yeah. troubled him. The trouble. That's why. That's when David had to play the flute for him. Remember, he had to play the flute to so the heart. I'm sorry, the heart. Yeah, I'm sorry, the heart. Right, so the spirit can leave him. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's trying to kill him within the temple. He's going to the temple and stuff. Yeah, good point. Yeah. And that joke be sitting up there with an evil eye towards David. He did have an evil eye to him. And he mad at David for nothing. And David still, you know, because he was anointed. He's like. You know, he never wanted to, he, he had times to kill him, but he never wanted to See, kill him because, man, that, yeah, he wanted to touch his anointing, him. right. But, you know, like I said, the Saul, he, he just felt some type of way that, look, you done took my position. He didn't take it. God he anointed him. Hey, yeah, he lost it. But the people didn't make it no better either since they caught, a Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was driving him crazy. Was driving him crazy. People were talking about, oh, man, King David ten times better than you, Saul. <laughs> that's messed up. That's messed up. That's messed up. That's messed up. You know how brothers are. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't know. like that. Yeah, they didn't like that at all. Second Samuel 5. 1 through 10. Go ahead. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and the king David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. See, so he see that he was king over Hebron first before he became king over Israel in, in, in Jerusalem. Go ahead. So how old was he? David was 30 years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. Mm -hmm. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. See, what happened was... Uh um, the Jebusites had like an impregnable wall, like I said, in Jerusalem. So they thought that they weren't able to get to them. They, they thought they were safe, not knowing that who on their side, no God on their side. Go ahead. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. That's Jerusalem, or Zion. And that's where they were. See, that's where the Jebusites were. But he took it over, though. That's what he said, the city of David, which was Jerusalem, which we you know that's the city of God. Go ahead. 
And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and in and inward. And David went on and grew great. And the Lord God was of hosts was with him. Praise God. Let's go so ahead. David reigned only forty years. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No. no. Uh, yeah. Was forty. Yeah. Forty. So he was what, about seventy when he died. Yeah, probably around that time. Yeah, can remember when uh, he was sick, and, uh, and, then, and then they brought that young woman in there, and they're like, surely David must be sick because he didn't want that woman. Right. They're like, yeah, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, David. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you don't want her. Oh, yeah, there's something wrong with David. Huh? <laughs> First Kings two. Now he's about to go ahead and pass it over to uh, to his son Sam, uh, Samson. I mean uh, Solomon. 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 First Kings two. We're going to read ten through twelve. One through twelve. Ten through twelve. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. One through twelve. Yeah, because no, yeah. Oh, so that's a ten? No, 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 no. no. It was no, no. It was a zero, but I crossed it out and I wanted to read the whole thing one through twelve. But I had ten through twelve though. Yeah, but yeah, let's read one through um, one through twelve. Go ahead. <coughs> now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. There shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab, the son of Zeru Zer Zer Zeruiah, mm -hmm. did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel unto Abner the son of Ner, and unto Amasa the son of J Jether, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his, ho his whore head go down to say to the grave in peace, but show kindness, Unto the sons of Barzillai and Gil Gileadite. I'm sorry, Barzillai the Gilead Gileadite. And let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because Absalom thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Sh Shimei, the son of Gera, of Benjamite, of Behirim, which cursed me with a grievous curse. In the day when I went to Mahaniah. But he came down to meet me at Jordan. And I swear to him by the Lord. Saying I will not put thee to death with the sword. Now therefore, a hold, therefore hold him not guiltless. For thou art a wise man. And knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. But his whore head brought but see, but his whore had bring thou down to the grave with blood. So J David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the days of in the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David, his father, 
and his kingdom was established greatly. And Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. And she said, Comest thou peaceably? Okay. And he Let's said, Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and go to um, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, we're going to read 19 through 27. Jeremiah 17, 19 through 27. Jeremiah 17, 19 through 27. Can you get there? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem. And say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye king of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do ye any work. But hallow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your father. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. And it came to pass, If ye diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city, on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and his city shall remain forever. So he told them, as long as they were able to keep the Sabbath day, mm. that's it. I'm seeing that, yeah. If they were just able to keep the Sabbath day, then he said, Then thou shalt enter into the gates of the city, kings and princes, sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This city shall remain forever. Well, we're going to keep, let's keep reading up. We're going to keep reading and see what happened. Go ahead. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, and from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices and meat offerings and incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. But if thou wilt not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. You see that, right? Oh, Lord. And that's what exists today. I mean, no, but not only no, no, no. We see that, but right now we're going to show what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like that, we're going to show what this actually took place. Go ahead. That, uh, that just brought to mind Isaiah chapter 58, where, where he says, you know, if you, if you do will, your pleasure, uh, not do your own pleasure on uh -huh. the Sabbath, and call my Sabbath, you know, for the light. Lord, the light. Mm -hmm. right? uh, that reminds me of that because you know, even with that pleasure, uh, if you read earlier in Isaiah 58, that First goes one. back to them. Do uh, work. Forcing people to actually do work. We're to do work on that. Yeah, yeah. So it right is. Here, right here. Uh, what I see right here is that some of the people, obviously, you know, you get yourself caught up in work thinking, okay, I need to bring in money for my city, bring in money for the kingdom or whatever. And, and it's like most I was saying, you don't even have to worry about bringing that burden. Don't, there you don't go. Don't even do no burden. Don't right. even work. Right. right. I'm going to make sure mm -hmm. that you're taken care of. Right. right. You don't have right. to worry about having to work on the Sabbath and trying to take care of yourself. I'm going to bless you no matter what. Wow. I was reading that before about. You know, the other day about the about the, uh, about the Sabbath day, about the burden, about doing your own pleasure. And I go when I look, that pleasure was dealing with work. It was dealing with work. You know, what I'm saying about doing your own pleasure on the Sabbath day. You know, and that so that's what pleasure meant. Yeah, that's yeah. what they were doing. And I was reading, I was like, oh, I was getting a better understanding of that. You know, I wasn't talking about you know doing your own pleasure. It was like the old pleasure was dealing with work, work period. How they were still doing the work on the Sabbath day. Because you got to read the context at the yeah, beginning. beginning verse one and two. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? Yes. You know, to, 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 to loose the yokes. Well, I saw they look. You yeah. know, to loose the yokes. So you know the yokes. You had yokes for your oxen. 
Mm-hmm. You know, work yeah. to make sure that your laborer is able to rest, right? Mm-hmm. So it was doing the work. Their pleasure was making money. And that's right. what that's what that pleasure that's was. What, yeah, it was. wasn't a pleasure like you can't watch, you know, the football game or you can't do this. It, it was it was talking about the pleasure we're dealing with the work. I, I, well, I, I guess you better that. understand it because I've had some thoughts about this stuff. Well, is it you know you're doing your pleasures just like you know if I right. play my instrument or something like that. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That, right, remember, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that, you know, I said like that. But then when I, I went back and read it earlier this week, and I was like, well, dang, that's, this is talking about dealing with work, though. I said, this is not really, you know, talking about it dealing with your own pleasure, though. You know because what I'm saying? I never felt convicted. Right, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. It's where was relaxing. Yeah, like I said, and I just I read that earlier this week, and I was just thinking about that. And then, then, then boom, he just brought that up. I was like, yeah. Ooh, and even, but even in that, obviously, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time Right. Exactly. 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 To be a burden, and even entering the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palace of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Well, we're going to go and read that. What happened? What did that happen? Let's go ahead and go to uh, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles thirty-six. Read Jeremiah twenty-two. Wait, where you? Yeah, Jeremiah twenty-two. Oh, okay. I'm going to read that one. Then we're going to go to. Okay, I'm going to hit it myself. Jeremiah twenty-two. Thank you. Yeah. Jeremiah 22, we're going to read 1 through 4, and then 24 to 30. Thanks. Okay. Jeremiah 22, 1 through 4, and then 24 through 30. You get there? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah, and speak there his, this word. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, that sittest upon the throne of David, thou and thy servants and thy people that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, Execute ye judgment and righteousness, and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor, and do no wrong. Do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. For if you do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house kings sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. Reverse five real quick. Mm-hmm. But if you will not hear these words, I will I swear by myself, saying, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. That's what happened. That's what happened. Let's go now. Let's go and read verse twenty four to thirty. Shall prosper. 
sitting upon the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. So you see this? He said, no man of this seed. So if you come from Kaniah, they will not sit on the throne of David. And you, and you, you go down and you read Matthew 1, the lineage of Kaniah coming from Solomon's side, that's where Joseph's from. Joseph's from this lineage, from Kaniah. So that's how we know Joseph couldn't have been the biological father of Jesus because he comes from this. He comes from this side of Kaniah. So his, so if Jesus was actually, because people teach that Jesus is, um, Joseph is the biological right. son of Jesus. So if that was the case, then Jesus could not, could, could no longer. Biological father. He couldn't have been yeah, the biological father. He couldn't be the Messiah because he could yeah, not exactly. sit. He could not be able to sit on his throne. Exactly. So when you go to Luke chapter three, he was through the sea, and when he came through Mary from through Nathan's side, you know what I'm saying through Nathan's side. So that's how he still had a way to get because he still came through the Messiah. And when you read Numbers uh, 36, it talks about if the woman didn't have the man there. Then, like I said, the inheritance belonged to the woman, and the woman we know that Christ came through Mary, which was from the house of Judah. That's how he was able to sit upon the throne. But a lot of people try to say, well, no. Joseph was his father. Well, if Joseph was his father, he wouldn't be able to sit upon the throne. Because remember, it said right here. He says, he says, write this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. And, so and, according to that, Kunai was pretty much, he was a despised brother. Yeah, broken, and, and what's that came broken from him? Broken idols. Yes, and what's so that came first, from him? Yeah, wow. He came from him. Like that's I said, uh, Joseph. Indeed. You, you can read that in Matthew one. He came for that. Now that's what I. That's when I, when I did that lesson. Um, it's, yeah, blas it's, it. it's blasphemy to say that jo Joseph is the biological son, right. biological right. father of Jesus. Right. And I really, I broke all that down, showing you that that's how you know Joseph was the Bible. So all these folks who teach that doctrine, this shuts them down right oh, here. Well, there's people teaching that. Oh, my oh yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the reason why G O C C, your boy. Oh, the reason why. Elder <laughs> This yeah, I haven't listened to him in so long. Yeah. This, this is the reason why they teach that, though, because because obviously, you know, like throughout uh, throughout the book, you see people going according to uh, paternity rather than maternity. Yes. So in other words, that they were trying to say like like Messiah had to come from Joseph, or else he wouldn't have been because they're in the flesh and not because true. because they the think about paternity. Yes. Because for you to be of the lineage, it's it's your, your father. father is. Uh -huh. you know, so that's why they were saying Joseph had to be his father because of that. I understand the reasoning, but it's not right. Numbers 36 breaks all that down. I mean, uh, breaks, uh, just shuts that down. Numbers 36. That's a, that's a good scripture right there. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, Jesus couldn't come from Joseph. The God said, that's the case. He, he would, would have been sin. The, he would have had right. sin. Not, because, well, yeah, yeah, sin too. Joseph was of a sin. I mean, like, Joseph had sin in him. No right. sinful, yeah, sinful, yeah, sinful yeah. flesh could. could, yeah, could yeah, but yeah, also could could coming could from his seed, though. You know what I'm saying? From the seed. Yeah, but the seed would be of sin because he's man. That would, Joseph's man. That would that wouldn't necessarily be a strong argument of that though. I, I definitely understand, but it wouldn't be a strong argument just because of the fact that uh, back in Ezekiel it says that the soul that sins must be put to death. So even if he did come from Joseph physically, if he never sinned, then he, he still wouldn't have sinned. Well, uh, um, when you go to Isaiah, when you go to Psalms fifty one though, Psalms fifty one says this. Psalms fifty one started from verse four and five, where it talks about against thee. Thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou, he says, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear that thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You know what I'm saying? So, by him, he like he said, they will say like he was, he was, he said, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So when he came out, he was already saying how he was already sinful. He was already shaping in sin. In, in, well, you see that so by him. We probably gonna have to uh, talk about that. Yeah, but so that's why that's why he couldn't come from man, a man's sin. That's, that's, that's go ahead. That's a good argument, but I don't agree with it. But I'm gonna have to talk about it. Right yeah, we we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll but that. that's how he couldn't come. I mean, that's how I see he couldn't come to a man's sin. Man's sin yeah, but we can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's sin. His mom said it's sin too, because there's people saying that um, Mary was sinless. That she was sinless. Oh, she no, 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 no. The, the Roman Catholic Church says that. Yeah, that yeah. They yeah. said there's only two people yeah. that did. They placed more emphasis on her than they knew Christ. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, oh, Moses said the same thing too. If she was human, if she was flesh, she had to be half sin. Yeah. Now, she was a virgin, a good person. And a virgin, but she had sin. That's what the angel said. Bless her, bless her you marry among all women because she was just the vessel that was chosen. Guess how she was. She was just the vessel, vessel to bring the Messiah. She had sin. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> but no, like I said, but when you read, like I said, when you read the the um in there, like I said, it shows it said the Mary and you know Mary didn't die. Like if you read the, the Roman um the catechism, she didn't die. Wow. She ascended also into heaven. And remember it says she didn't have any kids either. Well he know that she had yeah, plenty of brothers and sisters. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So we know that, you know what I'm saying? But they'll say she didn't have any more kids. Oh, no. She was a virgin the rest of her oh, life, and no. then she ascended into heaven oh. and sits on the right hand of Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah, she's oh. the queen of heaven. They made her deal. The queen of heaven. Yeah, that, she was already, yeah, that's what they did. The queen, the queen of heaven, literally. Yeah, yeah, they call her the queen of heaven. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's how. <laughs> you know, the same one in the Bible. There you go, right. The queen, you see that queen of heaven. Yeah. Right, so let you know right then and there, that's, that's way off. Mm. Right. Let's go, now let's go ahead and go to uh, Second Chronicles 36. Second Chronicles 36, we're going to read 4 through 21. If you remember, he told them, he said, listen, about you, so if, you know, if you don't bring in a burden on my Sabbath day and things like that, he said, I'll allow you to remain kings in my land. But if you don't, he said, I'm going to leave your land desolate with a fire that can't be quenched. But we're going to see what happens. We know the latter happened, but we'll just read it anyway. Second Chronicles 36, 4 through 21. And this one went into captivity around 5, 586 B.C. under the uh, Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylon. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem, and turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jeho Jeho Jehoiazad, mm -hmm. Jehoaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his stead. Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign. Now, we know he wasn't eight years old when he began to reign. That was just a typo. Because um, go to Second Kings Second Kings 24 and 8. Well, yeah, that's right. That's, that's yeah, it was, like he was supposed to be 18. It show 18 here. It says oh, so yours says 18 where? Yeah, mine says, in my footnote, it says 18, go to 2 Kings uh, 24 and 8. 24, uh, from verses 8, 8 to 17. 17. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then another one that just said 2 Kings 24, 8. Yes, that's 18. Go ahead. 18. I would just, I would just uh, that, that stood out because before we came here and read about how they changed Eliakim's name to Jehovah. Like it came to my mind, I was like, I, was like, I think that's a lichen. And then we, we end up going here to find out that's that's a lichen. Okay. But if you look at the, uh, the meaning of the name, uh, Eliakim, you know, you have Eli or L. It means it means God. L uh, raises up. Okay. And okay. got changed to Yehoiakim, which means Yah raises up. Uh, okay, so same. Uh, yeah, L. Yeah, okay, I got L, you. Yeah. L mm -hmm. to Yah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because L. Yeah, L means also Yah. Confirmation for uh, no, it was just something interesting. Yeah, it was just interesting. But yeah, well, we see that he wasn't no eight-year-old king, though. He was. So he was, what was the precept to this? To, uh, uh, to go to Second Kings twenty-four eight. Second Kings twenty-four and eight. You'll see that. What does it say? Joachim was eighteen years old. See? when he began to reign. He was eighteen. Mm -hmm. Not so not eight. Was like eight. It's just like, like I said, that was a typo or something like that. He clearly wasn't eight. Uh -huh. Same person though. Cause remember, remember, remember it's read right here. Verse 8, uh, 2 Chronicles 36 and 8 says, That's good. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and the abomination which he did and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of kings of Israel and Judah. Jeho Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. So you can also go back and look at the book of kings and get also a familiarity with what's going on. That's what, So you go back in the book of kings. Here it is. It was showing you same thing, but he was also... He was 18 instead of 8, though. That's what the uh, kings. What chapter and verse was that again? Uh, 2 Kings 24 and 8. Because uh, that's, 
That's a good one right there, 24 and 8. I, I studied that before, but I didn't know where it was. Give me one second. I just want to see something. Okay. Oh, yeah, Lisa gave a footnote to show that the Bible yeah. was just a, a typo or something. Yeah, that's, but, yeah, but also in verse 8, back. it told you to go back to the book of Kings yeah, and look. Back to the book. And that's what that's why I tell that you gave it comfort. Yeah, yeah, that's what. That's to make deep. sure. Because, because in 2 Kings 24, it has it has the word for 8, but it also has the word for the team in there. But the other one only has the word for 8. Gotcha. Okay, I see. Oh, in the, in the Hebrew. I, I got you. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. I see what you yeah, he was eight, cause they know eight year old king. He's like, that's too young to be a king. Like, golly, eight, like, yeah, no life experience. Right, no experience. Eighteen, we should go out through. That's King Tut. Oh, that's no, not him. <laughs> there was one where uh, this this uh, his uh, this female was trying to kill him because she was one. To, she wanted to be the ruler, and uh, they they had him in the temple. That's Jezebel and Ahaz, is it? No. Because Jezebel they, they was... Killed, they killed her outside the temple. They didn't want to kill her inside the temple. She was trying oh, to... I know what he's talking about. He's talking about... Uh, dang, what was that story? Because they were trying to... Um, when they killed all the brothers. Yeah. And he, yeah, he killed... He they got killed all the... They killed, yeah. killed all the... That was a priest, though, wasn't it? Yeah, they, they kept... He, he was, was a, the baby. He was a baby, priest, though. He was a priest, I think. I think he was a priest. I think he's a Levite. We'll go over that after, uh, yeah, yeah, after yeah, service. Yeah, yeah, we'll go over that. We'll go ahead and go. But we see that he really wasn't no, no eight years old. He was actually 18. Mm -hmm. And then he began to reign. Go ahead. Verse 9. Okay. He and he months. reigned mm -hmm. three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He didn't reign long. <laughs> Dang, this three months and ten days. That was a car wreck. <laughs> For real, that was it. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead, verse 10. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. See, Zedekiah was our last king. Now we're going to read about him again. He was our last king. Go ahead. Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign and reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. There were very few kings that did right. Like, you know, you had Hezekiah, Josiah, David, things like that. But for the most part, all the other kings did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the few that were, were that did the will of God, they were mainly from the southern kingdom. Right? Yeah, for the, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, uh-huh. Because those, most of those northern kings <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. straight out just wicked. Yeah, they all messed up. Yeah, they were. That's why Christ said that the most <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah, he, he's right, though. Uh -huh. Go ahead. <laughs> and humble not himself before Jeremiah, the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against the king Nebuchadnezzar, who, made, who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers rising up bet betimes and sending, be and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So he always kept sending prophets like, like look, 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 Judah. Calm down, like come to the Lord. So he said, the Lord said, of oh, their father sent to them by message, rising up in bedtimes or before times, and sending because he had compassion on the people and on his on, on his dwelling place to with Jerusalem. But go ahead. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. God said, look after wise. I'm time's up. He's I'm tired of saying these people here. Remember, like they said, you know what? Remember, he also said in uh, Old Jerusalem, Old Jerusalem, which thou killest the prophets. Remember what Luke was saying that in Luke uh, 13, 33, 34, Christ, like he said, I always wanted to gather you like a hen do his brood. He said, but look, he said, well, now your land is going to remain until you desolate. He said, you'll call on me. He said, when you, hear the, when you call upon the name of the Lord. You know what I'm like that? Because he's like, look, I've constantly wanted you to come back. But no, like I said, just like right now, you try to tell them about trying to keep the commandments and stuff like that, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Right. They don't want Israel, especially Israel, they don't want to hear this. Nope. They don't want to hear this at all. Go ahead. Verse 17. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, 
who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young men or yeah. maiden, old man. Let's see, young men or maiden, old man or him that stopped, stooped for yeah. age. He gave them all into his hand. So if you were young, young woman, man, he didn't give a, he didn't care. Old man, stupid, now you feel sorry, compassion for your elder. He killed everything. And then whatever he didn't kill, he took him into captivity. Go ahead, watch this. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and, and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of God and See? break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the places, palaces thereof with fire. Remember God told them, if you don't keep the Sabbath day, I'm going to burn down this village. If you don't do that, go ahead. And destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jer Jeremiah and to the land he had enjoyed until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill mm. three score and ten years. Now in the first year... Seventy years, man. Seven. You see that? For Seventy years, like I said. But he just told her, look, you keep the Sabbath. You So that's how people people don't think the Sabbath is important to this day, though. Mm -hmm. But he's telling them, he said, look, I burned that door city down because they weren't keeping the Sabbath. But right. you, got, you, got, you got people that go to Sunday worship and stuff, and they say, well, I, yeah, I know that Saturday, that, that but, Saturday's the Sabbath but, and stuff, but, you know, that's the day I do my shopping, child. <laughs> Gotta get my head I mean, My nails done. They claim that they know, but they, they do know, but they don't. They don't. They, they, they don't feel it's important. And that's and then you see it through scripture and stuff. Throughout our history and stuff, we never took the Sabbath serious. There you bro. go. That's crazy. Man. Good point. Something that really stands out to me, even going back to uh, King Saul, is how important uh, it is to be a leadership. How important it is being a leadership because right. everybody else is only gonna follow what you tell them as the king, because that's the head right there. That's the leader. So, so with that being said, you can see how how bad the consequences were. Like literally, Saul he just he ain't killed everything, and and literally the kingdom was taken away from him. Yeah, so right. Yeah. Like, yes. So like like the most of you can say when it comes to you being a king over his people, right? And you're supposed to be leading them in the right direction. So, right. Because right. they only gonna do what you do if you if you're not keeping the law, statutes, and judgments. What are they gonna have to do? That's profound what you just said because what we were just reading about Zedekiah, he was so wicked with people. They they <laughs> just they just follow behind him. Yeah, they did. Yeah, no leadership. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, um, you gotta remember. I, I know it's something we didn't read, but I know it's in there. Um, when they wanted, when they requested the king, remember God also gave them a warning too. Remember He was saying something about how, like, all right, you get, if you get this king, it's gonna, all these things are gonna happen to you. Oh, we're gonna read that. Oh, we're gonna read it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all came to pass because mm -hmm. we wanted a man figure to be yeah. in the head, but no, that's because that he, God already knew like that's gonna that's gonna bring in uh, sin. Like yeah. the other nations, they want to be like the other nations. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Christ said, posed the question. He said, haven't I always been with you? Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, and that's what he even said. He said, because you rejected me as your king. Mm -hmm. Christ let him know, said, I was your king. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. See, they wanted a figurehead. See, yeah, they, they want to, like God they want to be the like the other nations. Yeah, to have a figurehead to say, okay, this, uh, we cannot identify this. Something that we can king. see, just like we the can see. Right. We want this right. golden cap that we can see. Say well, good point. Like I said, but after Samuel, like, look, hold on, man. You know what they, I'm saying? They Yo. told Samuel, your boys riding dirty. <laughs> they riding dirty, <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah, they were taking filthy lucre and all kinds of this. We don't want them over us. So now we want a king. They're taking our money. Yeah, they were doing all of that. They're coming to get prayer. They're trying to take all our money. Yeah. That is right. They're trying to get all that. Let's go, let's go to, uh, now we're going to go see how God took away the uh, Levitical priesthood for a minute. No, 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 no. He's got to finish 22. Not yet, not yet, not yet. No, 21. It's just 21. Oh, okay. 
Let's go to Ezekiel 21 right now. Scripture just see how disobedient is. Yeah, yeah. It's constant, man. Yeah. You know what it says about the heart of man, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, continuously yeah. with it. Yeah. And evil for all things. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's the explanation, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel 21, 1 through 5, and then 18 through 27. Ezekiel 21, 1 through 5, then 18 through 27. unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel. And to say, let's see, and say to the Lord of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from, let's see, cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh, from the south to the north. And we're going to see who that sword is and what that sword is. Go ahead. That all flesh may know that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. It shall not return any more. We're going to read 18 through 27. Go ahead. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Also, thou son of man, appoint thee two ways that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. See, that sword is Babylon. Mm -hmm. That's who that sword was that he used. Go ahead. Let's see. Both twain shall come forth out of one land, and choose thou a place. Choose it at the head of the way to the city. Appoint a way that the sword may come to Rabab and the Ammonites and to Judah and Jerusalem, the, de the defense. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways to use divination. He made his arrows bright. He consulted with images. He looked in the liver at his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem, to appoint captains to open the mouth of the slaughter, to lift up the voice with shouting, to appoint battering rams against the gates, to cast a mount and to build a fort. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight, to them that have sworn oath. But he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, and that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings your sins do appear. Because I say that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. And thou profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come, when iniquity shall have an end, thus said the Lord God, remove the diadem, and take off the crown. You see that? He says, And thou profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is to come, right, when iniquity shall have an end. So there's going to be a time when iniquity is going to have an end when a, when a certain king or prince comes. Watch what's going to say this. 26. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Remove the diadem and take off the crown. So remove the diadem, that's like a turban, and also uh, take off the crown. That's what we're dealing with rulership. Go ahead. This shall not be the same. Mm -hmm. Exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. Watch what he's going to do what? I will overturn, oh. overturn, overturn mm. it, and it shall be no more. So he's telling you, I'm going to overturn, overturn, overturn the, 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 the one who sits on David's throne. 
No one's going to sit on it until when? Shall be no more until he come whose right it is. And it, and I will give it him. And, who, and whose right it is that's, that's going to come to sit on David's throne. That's exactly. So he took, that's what I said, he took the diadem and the turban, the diadem and the crown away from the kings of Israel and said, listen, I'm going to overturn, overturn, overturn. No one's going to actually sit in this seat anymore until whose right it is. And who was our very first king? Jesus. That was our very, exactly. So he could be the one. So yeah, so Zedekiah was our last king. He's going to come and sit in his throne because that's whose right it is. He was our king. He told Samuel early that he's not rejecting you. He's rejecting, rejecting me. There you go. And also, when you remember, you read Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Remember, he came riding on the donkey of an ass, you know, uh, into the city. And you see that. That, that prophecy got fulfilled in Matthew 21, verse 5. Go ahead. Um, how long um, after that period was it that Jesus became uh, king? Long well, after what period? Like after this when he did that and then they didn't have any more. And so Jesus well, no, well, remember, remember he's going to come the second time to sit on the throne of David. Oh, he's when he comes back, yeah. When oh, he comes up, okay. yeah, he's not. He's not. I thought, I thought that they didn't have any more kings until then. Yeah, Zedekiah was our last king. Zedekiah. So when Christ that's comes, mm -hmm. so when Christ comes back on the second coming, that's when he's going to sit on the throne and he's going to be our king again. The rightful king. The rightful king. Because when, when he was on the earth, he wasn't in the rulership position. Yeah, he wasn't. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because you know, like, back, that's when he's going to be see when you read when you read Zechariah nine, nine through eleven when he says this Zechariah nine nine through eleven it says. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the colt of the foal of an ass. So we understand this was Christ. He fulfilled this in Matthew 21, 5. But look at verse 10. He doesn't fulfill this, though. And I, he said, this on the second coming. And I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from, from even to sea, and from rivers down, even to ends of the earth. Verse 11, he also fulfilled on his first coming. And as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein the water. And then you start reading from verse 12 down, then that, that's when he fulfills everything else on his second coming, where he's going to do battle between the Gentiles. But when he came the first time, he rolled on the coat of ass, so he fulfilled that prophecy. He shed his blood so that he could get us out of his prison. What was that prison? That was under the curse of the law, or the death penalty of the law, to where we were prison. Um, we were bound under that. He relieved us from that, ushered in the new covenant, and now when he comes back the second time, now he's going to be in rulership, and then you read it down. So a lot of times, though, I, I try to show people this who don't believe in the Messiah, like, this was fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? Like, he fulfilled verse 9 and 11, but verse 10... 12 and through 17, that's going to be fulfilled on the second coming. But like I said, but he was still, they were still calling him king, though. So, so you see that they called him king. Behold, that king. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. You know what I'm saying? For the, uh, for, for the, for the highest. You know what I'm saying? Where did pray for the highest? So they knew who he was, but he just didn't come, like I said, to reign at that time. But they still that's knew that he was of, his king. That's why a lot of people were so disappointed because they were expecting for him at that time to come wow. and stuff that set things into in In order, proper right. Order. Exactly. But, but Christ said that it was not his time. There you go, not his time, exactly. Right. But you see that he was our king, though. You know what I'm saying? So he's been our king. That was him in the beginning. Because like I said, they didn't reject you, Saul. They rejected me from being their king. And you say, and who was the one that was king and rolled in the cold and full of an ass? That was the Christ. Messiah. Exactly, Christ. that was Christ. So the Romans, he was on the cross over when he was crucified. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. Well, I know it said King it said on the King, King of the Jews, and then also when he had in different languages. Yeah, yeah and you remember when he was married. You remember when he was born. Remember he was born. Matthew two, uh, two and uh, one and two says, "Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him." So, yeah, so like I said, so, but he knew that he was the king of the Jews, so go ahead. Yeah, they, they knew that he was supposed to be the one who was going to sit on the throne of David. Mm -hmm. So like, like when he comes back, now he's going to be physical, you know, he's, he's going to be uh, spiritual but physical, literally sitting on his throne yeah. as king. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being in heaven, he's going right. to have to be down here. Right. Right. Power, the power of a king. Mm -hmm. Praise God, exactly. 
So now it's going to go to uh, Exodus because you see not only did he take away the kingship, we're going to see what also was taken away as well, dealing with the Levitical priesthood. Let's go to Exodus 28. Because remember, the Messiah, he had to be both what? King, king and, priest. and priest. He had to be both. He's our king and who, and he's our priest after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus. So he's been both. King of righteousness, praise God. So he fed both. He fed both the bill, right? So that's why you know, uh, you know, you try to show people that you know, and they it's kind of hard for them to see because, like, well, show show me how we came through the line of a, uh, you know, like I said, they always say the paternal, you know, what I'm saying like that, and then some know that you know, well, if Joseph was his father, then we know that he he could be the one that sit on his throne. So, but so see, we, that's what the layers and stuff. See, because like this word and stuff is is revealed to your spiritual. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people and stuff, they're carnal. They they carnal minds. Minds. They're All the they flesh. can see is yeah. just the flesh yeah. and the aspect. Surface how can you, how can yeah. you have a baby born from a virgin? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, 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 so and it's crazy they, because we, 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 we can go against the natural order of the things that he said in, in the Right, place. right. That's when you see that word in Isaiah 7, 14, when you see the word, that word Isaiah 7, 14, where it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. That sign, because in Hebrew, like that sign means miracle. That's a miracle. You'll see it, like in the Hebrew, it says miracle. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, meaning what? God with us. So if you see, so that's, like I said, so if, if, if it was just someone, you know, regular, as far as like, you know, a man regular just having a baby, what what kind of sign, what kind of it's miracle is that? That's no. not, and that happens all the time. But it is a miracle when a woman who could conceive a child without having to lay with a man. You know, something right. like that. You know, right now they're doing intravenous, you know, fertility so as far as doing, taking egg out, putting it in, yeah, and then right. putting it back. But God did this thousands of years before that. Mm -hmm. that's you know what I'm saying, like that. But the point is, that's why you said, behold, a virgin. Well, you know, that's a, that's talking about Isaiah's son. You know, get out of here. They, well, what, that, that's what, that's what. The, people in that era, too, when they knew Jesus as a child, and they said, you know, that's, that's Mary that's, and Joseph. Joseph, yeah. That's his boy. Oh, come on. That's how I, I saw him grow up. Man. I know mm -hmm. he's not. And everybody, I know he, mm -hmm. no way he could be. No, no, you're right. That's what, yeah. That's no, what they saw, I saw him grow up. Now, how you going to tell me he's right? Right. Because remember, he wasn't doing a lot of things until no, he got he older. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that? Yeah. Though? What's interesting is that Joseph, then, I mean, you don't even hear Joseph uh, talking about it in there at all. That's actually. a good point. You hardly know. Joseph passed away. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but, but you don't hear Joseph talking about it all while, while Christ is actually doing ministry. But, uh, oh, no, no, no. Joseph was around when he died, though. Because, you know, when you read Zechariah 12, mm -hmm. 10 through 12, it talks about how. It says, uh, like, when, when he died, when he got pierced. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead and finish your statement. Go ahead and finish your statement. Uh, what I was going to say is that it's, it's really interesting that they didn't go around saying, like, talking about how much a miracle it was. They kept it a secret. Yeah. Like, literally, in Christ, he, he never said that either. He, he, never, he never talked about how I was born from a virgin. Yeah, he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he like, wasn't going to make a point. Right, like, no, right, he right, didn't. Where, where it was only right. revealed to people who had eyes. That's to the point. Eyes. That's right. true. Yeah. That's a good point. Right, right. 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 Everything he did, he was trying to give glory to the Father. Yeah, excellent point. Yeah, that's a good point. He wasn't going around saying, you know him, that one. Yeah, you know like, him, what? Now, now he and did reveal husband. it to the woman at the, at the well. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, but you know, but for the most part, and then Peter, he said, flesh and blood, that I reveal that to you. But my Father, which was in heaven, like, he revealed that to you, said that for you, for you are the Christ. The son of good point, too, is when that, when, when that guy was possessed with those devils. And they yeah. were yeah, out, yeah, yeah. Them devils with the blast. Like, hey, man, we know who He told them to be quiet, he though. Told, he told them to hush. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, yeah. He but, when he, but when you see that they died in uh, Zechariah 12, verse 10 through 12, it talks about it. They said, they said when they mourned, when he mourned, they said the house of Nathan mourned together, the house of... Uh, Judah mourned again. They all like so that's why you so, that's why you see they weren't together when they mourned when that's why Joseph wasn't around. Because when Mary mourned in the house of Nathan, she was from the house of Nathan, she mourned with them. House of Judah, when he came from Solomon, they mourned together. It was showing you each each house, the house of Levi, they mourned together at the time when he died. And I'll show you that after class though. But yeah, they all they all mourned, they all mourned together. They didn't I mean they all mourned they separate. By the thing, they didn't they didn't mourn together. That's why like I said, we say, well, why wasn't Joseph there? And why was his mom there? You know, it's like that. But it showed in that prophecy that he that uh, that he wasn't going to be there. Each house, yeah, remember I broke that down before. Each house was mourning together on their own. But I'll show you that later on after, after, the, after the class. Um, let's go to okay Exodus. We there Exodus twenty eight. We're going to read six through twelve. Exodus twenty eight six through twelve. 
When you get there, go ahead. Okay. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue and of purple, of scarlet, of fine twine linen, cunning work. And it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof. And so it be, shall he be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, of purple, of scarlet, of fine twine linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones, Engrave them on the names of the children of Israel, six hundred names on one stone, and the other six names on the rest on the other stone according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, he says, Shalt thou engrave two stones in the names of the children of Israel, thou shalt make them to, set, to be set in altars of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel, and Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his shoulders for a memorial. So you see what they, they had to wear a certain thing, or like a certain breastplate. I know in that book that you have that, that you gave me, like, it shows, it shows it too. Like, it's, it's, it was nice. Mm -hmm. How I had the breastplate and all that kind of stuff. Right. How they like, I'll show you out the class. Like 12 that. names of uh, the tribes. Oh, well, the exactly. Six right. one. Yeah, six on the other. It was nice of all the stones and all the, you find it was, it was beautiful. Wow. Let's go ahead and go to, um, Next chapter over, Exodus 29. We're going to read 4 through 9. Yeah, that one. We're going to read it. Oh, I thought, oh, okay. I thought you didn't have it in your Bible. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Exodus 29, 4 through 9. Go ahead. And Aaron and his sons, though, uh, let's see, thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shalt wash them with water. And thou shalt take the garments, and put upon Aaron the coat, and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod, and the breastplate, and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitri upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the mitri. See, that's another thing I know that Isaiah and I were talking about. Remember I was saying a man shouldn't uh, have his head covered when, you know, when a brother tells you, hey, bro, I took off my hat when I was talking about the word of God. Mm -hmm. But you see, they had Mitri's on their head. These are high priests, and they were going over the word. But they had Mitri's on their head, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Mitri's is a form yeah, it's like, of a yeah, it's like Yeah, it's like a covering on their head. That's lovely to go get it. Go get the uh, pressure on. Wait. Oh, you see it? Oh. But, yeah, like I said, so you see that, so it was like, so I know that's why they, that was a good thing when, we, when you talked about that. They're like, you know, when Paul made that statement, like, you know, why would he make that? But then you can go in here in the Torah. You see they had a mitri on their head when they were going over the word of God. But Paul was saying that if a, what is it, if a man's head is not covered, he just, uh, what was it? If a man's head is covered, it's covered. then he's not under, in, under in, you know, his head. Christ, right? Christ, yeah. But then you see that they had mitris on mm -hmm. or a bonnet. You know what a bonnet is? <laughs> the women be wearing bonnets now. Yeah, and some people, some people actually say that uh, you know I'm not sure how true this is, and it makes it makes a lot of sense that that the single women would actually have their heads uncovered to let people know that they were actually available, and the married women would have their heads covered so they were under right. their covering. Mm. You know, so that way they wouldn't people wouldn't try to approach them and try to court them or anything like that. Mm. 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 So it's, it's deep. That's what you're saying, yeah. But did they bring that to the um to the um church? Like, yeah, I mean, like, the church got it from, from yeah, what Paul said. Mm -hmm. and, and see, obviously, a lot of times people, like, we all we all do it. We interpret scripture backwards. We try to interpret mm -hmm. the Old Testament through the New Testament. So we'll be like, you know, you ain't supposed to have no head covering on, da, 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 da. But then we go back to the other, to the Old Testament, and we're like, oh, well, why do you got a head covering on right here? Or even, like, it's a shame for a man to have long hair, but what about somebody's on the Nazarite vow? Yeah. You see what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So it's all about context. Right, because Paul said it was a shame for a man to have long hair, but then Nazarite, boy, they had long, too. Like, what's the name? Samson, was, Samson yeah, had seven long locks. Never cut his hair, right. Christ didn't either, because he was a Nazarene, right? Well, you, like, Nazarene is different from Nazarite. Yeah. Nazarene means you're from Nazareth. Yeah. Christ had wine, so he wasn't a Nazarite. Yeah, was yeah Christ strong, had wine. Yeah, because yeah. Jesus drank wine. Yeah, Nazarite, yeah, but when you go to Numbers chapter 6, Numbers chapter six breaks down the Nazarite vow, but a Nazarene, he was Jesus, Jesus from Nazareth. Nazareth. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but he was born yeah, but in Bethlehem, yeah, no, Judah. Though he was just born there, but he was raised 
Nazareth. In Nazareth, yeah. Cause I've, I've heard people say he was born in Nazareth. I've heard that he was born in Egypt. And I also heard he was born, but the Bible says he was, he was really born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Yeah, Bethlehem. Yeah, he was right. raised in Nazareth. There you go, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, verse, verse 7. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest, priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. See, that bonnet means like hat. It says put hats upon them. So it's like you see that, it's like, well, why would you know Paul say that? You know, about... You know, not having your head though. So you know, this you see that. But and these are the priests, though. You know, what I'm saying like that. These are the Levitical priesthood who who are doing this. But now we're gonna go and see when God took that away. Let's go and go to uh, Hosea three. You know, you got some people who justify that image that the IUIC can. You know that little image that they have. Yeah, <laughs> with like, yeah, like they'll justify the, the white hair with the red eyes. Like they'll justify that image, but then they get mad when, when you show the image of C.J. Bourgier. Like, trust me, I don't. I definitely don't control that C.J. Bourgier image, but you're just as wrong trying to trying to portray that image when it says, "Do not make any graven images of, about him." You're know saying like that, like you sh you shouldn't make images of Christ like that. So. You know, but then they're like, well, no, nah, but this right here is a, is a better depiction of how he looked. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, so you're not supposed to have that. Joe's probably with a mark and everything. So. Oh, they do. They got them on shirts and everything. Oh, okay. With the, with the so menorah in the back. Of, yeah. You get money off it. Come on, man. Like, mm -mm. like I said, at the end of the day, right is right, wrong is wrong. Like That's I said, right. even though he's like, like I said, I believe he more looked like that, but I'm not, I am don't condone that because God said don't do it. There you go. There you go. Exactly. So yeah. Amen. Hosea three, and we're gonna read one through five. When you get there, go ahead. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love fl flagons of wine. Yeah, it's like raisin cakes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I brought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half a homer of barley and said unto her, Thou shalt abide from me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. You see that? Without an image. There you go. Like I said, but you see, but without a king. So it's been about 26 years since we've had a king. And it's been about at least 2,000 years since we had, you know, the uh, uh, Levitical priesthood. Yeah, right, yeah, with the ephod. So he told him. So he, he said, look, it's going to be this many times, this many days that you're going to go without having a king and prince, without sacrifice, without an image, without an ephod, without teraphone. Go ahead. Verse five. That's what we just saw. That's what we, you know, the, uh, we explained that. The head covering and the, and the, and the, and the breastplate. Remember the, breastplate. the ephod. That was the, uh, uh, we, read, we read in uh, Exodus, what, what, the, what, the, uh, what the, um, the priest was supposed to wear. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Amen. Amen. Well, we see that ain't happening yet, though, because uh, David ain't back yet. Let's go ahead and go to 2 Samuel. Samuel 7, 
1 through 21. You get that? Go ahead. 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 21. And it came to pass when the king... 1 through, 1 through 17. We got to read 20. Go ahead. We'll go ahead, though. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go, and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day. But I walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Right, so you can read in Exodus you know, where they built a tabernacle and stuff for them, but they didn't build a temple for Christ. Go ahead. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribe of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why build you not me a house of cedar? Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of great men that are in the earth. That was good. He was he said herd sheep, and now he is the king of king of Israel. That's, he went from like I said, he went from rags to riches. He was the bottom, he was the bottom <laughs> to the top. He did. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse ten. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and <coughs> move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more. You see that? For time. Look at verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them and that they, they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Are we moving right now? And are, we're, and we, ain't, we ain't get here on our own will either. We got here because what? We were through captivity. And so we're the, so, so remember that's what Christ said in Luke 21, 24. It said that uh, Israel shall be led away captive into what? All nations. All nations. You know what I'm saying? That Jerusalem should be caught down until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So he's saying that we will move no more at this time, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict us anymore as before time. So this is, he's going to the future right now. He's letting us know, like, because here we are. We're being afflicted by our enemies right now. You know what I'm saying? And we're being moved on to like here because we're, we're supposed to be in our land. And where is our land? Israel. Right, not America. You ain't from Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? That's not where you're from. You were born there, but you're, we're from Israel. Because it's, you know, folks are, I'm from Alabama. No, nah, no, you're not. You were born there while you was in captivity here, right. but you actually from Israel. That's the same way with those Israelites and stuff that's over in Brazil. And over same in, there, and, too. There you and go. And everywhere and stuff. They yeah, in Guyana and in Trinidad, Tobago and Jamaica, all those Indian places. Everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. West Africa, places in West Africa, all those places. Kush, all those places. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And when thy ways be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, who shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now we, now we understand that... His seed, Solomon, we understand Solomon built a temple for him, right? Mm -hmm. But we understand also that his 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 kingdom fell. And then his son, Jeroboam and Rehoboam, they, they took over the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Remember, his kingdom was split into two because of, you know, because of how, you know, pretty much uh, uh, King Solomon turned from God. But, you know, he turned back to God, but God pretty much split, split the kingdom from him. So he told him, like, right here. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So who is this seed that's going to establish a throne for his kingdom forever? Is it Solomon? Who was that seed? Christ. There you go. It was Christ. Exactly. And see, but see, when people read this as well, they can't really accept Like, they'll look and say that was Solomon. But like, nah, his kingdom wasn't established forever. It split. 
That's you know right. what I'm saying? Of the, of the two kingdoms under him. So it wasn't together one kingdom. But like when Christ comes back, he's going to bring both the house of Israel and the house of Judah back. He'll be the king over all of them. But right now, we see that we're split up right now. But go ahead, though. That's, that's just, I want to just point that out. Go ahead, verse 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever, mm -hmm. according to all these words and according to all this vision. So did Nathan speak unto David. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a bit confused because, I mean, let's see, from 13, you say he's talking about Christ. First, he, he, he talked about Solomon, and then, he, and then he went down to further down and was start talking about Christ. Because he we know, went back and talked about uh, Solomon, because I will be his father, and he should be my son, if he commit iniquity. I mean, we know he's not, he's not talking about Christ there, because Christ was not going to commit iniquity. Yeah, but he said, but I will chasten him with the rod of men and the stripes, and with the stripes of the children of men. He was bruised for our divinities, and by his stripes we are healed. Who? Who, who did that happen to? Christ. When you read, when you read Isaiah you 53. You're talking about him committing iniquity. But he never committed sins, iniquity. The sins of the people were on him. Oh, were on Christ. So that's why when he chastened him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men, the iniquity. We know that See, he didn't he was sin. Chasing so with, the, with, 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 with the, the rod of men, that, that was the, the Roman. I mean, the Roman soldiers and stuff. And, 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 with and, the, and remember, and all the sins, all, 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 all the sins fell on him. He gave him. He gave him. Um, what was going to happen, and then he gave him the consequences for what, what you know, what would happen. Well, since he didn't commit the sin, but his people committed the sin, then he had to take the consequences for the sin. There you go. The consequences for him. I do, I do see what he's saying about the whole Solomon thing right there, um, because it does, it does say he's going to establish his kingdom forever. But mm -hmm. well, we know that his kingdom wasn't his kingdom anyway. That was the kingdom of, of his father David, and David's kingdom is going to be established forever. So I can see how that can be both right there. Say, say, say it again now. You can because say. right here, inside, in this verse right here, if we go back to verse 13 where it says, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So right here, we know the throne of his kingdom. Uh, Solomon was sitting on the throne of David. Mm -hmm. And we know David's kingdom is going to be established forever through Christ sitting on that throne. So I, I can still see how this right here was addressing Solomon, even if it was talking about That's why I said it's talking about something, but, then it, but it went further down the line dealing with Christ. Yeah, exactly. Right. 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 Yeah. I, was, I was just agreeing with him saying, Oh yeah, like yeah, like a double. Okay, I, yeah, like a double. Mean, yeah, like because he went there, then he went further down, showing the you know, Because we understand that his kingdom didn't stand forever, because his kingdom split. split. You know what I'm saying? After after, after that, like I said, but we understand when, when Christ sits on the throne, it ain't gonna split. It's gonna stand forever. Like I said, and he was he was just emphasizing the part that applied to Solomon and how how the next part about iniquity was burned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's why he said that's why he talked about the iniquity. He said I knew that could be talking about Christ because Christ didn't sin, but when it right, talks about right. that. He said, I will chase him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the children of men, showing that, you know, like I said, when he took upon the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what happened to was Christ. Christ. There you go, right, because, yeah, that's All what happened upon, upon him. Upon yeah, again, because we know Solomon sinned, but we know that Christ never sinned. You know what I'm right. saying? But the reproaches right. of men that fell on them also fell on me. When you read, when you read that in Romans 15. So all the sins fell upon him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Christ, even though he knew no sin, he still took upon all the sins of the people mm -hmm. so that he could go ahead and establish like this so that we can get back in right standing with the Father. That's why it's called like the Lamb of God, the sacrificial yeah, Lamb. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they got a virus in uh, huh? uh, Let's go to Psalms 89. Psalms 89, we're going to read 3 and 4, and then 34 to 37. Psalms 39, I'm sorry, Psalms 89, we're going to read verses 3 and 4, and then 34 through 87. Psalms 89, verse 3 and 4, and then 34 through 37. Psalms 89, verse 3 and 4, and then 34 to 37. When you get there, go ahead. I have, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever, 
and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. 34 to 37. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have, once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. Praise God. So now let's go ahead and, get, let's go ahead and read uh, Psalms 132. Psalms 132, we're going to read 8 through 18. Psalms 32, 8 through 18. Psalms 32, 8 through 18. You get there? What did I say? Psalms 132? Yeah, Psalms 132, 8 through 18. Yeah, you get there? Go ahead. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimonies, that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon thy throne forevermore. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Mm -hmm. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. And her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. Mm -hmm. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and go to Acts 2. Acts chapter 2, we're going to read 29 and 30. Acts chapter 2. We're going to read 29 and 30. Acts chapter 2, 29 and 30. Acts chapter 2, 29 and 30. When you get there, go ahead. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher, which is, his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Luke 1. Luke chapter 1, we're going to read 30 through 35. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to read 30 through 35. That's why I say the New Testament testified of the old, like, mm -hmm. so, you know, letting you know. Luke 1, 30-35. Luke chapter 1, 30-35. You get there? Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him un, give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Because when he gets on, it's gonna be established forever, there ain't gonna be no end. Go ahead. Then said Mary unto the angel. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She should have said, how? She said, oh, I understand how this is because, you know, me and Joseph already laid together. So, yeah, I understand he's going to come. But what she say, verse 25? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mm. Amen. 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 This is that, this is the first right here. So when I was used to listen to Brother uh, Ricard and stuff, I used to, uh, when GLCC when I yeah. came to this, I thought the brothers were really sharp and stuff. But when he started talking about that seed and stuff, <laughs> that Joseph was, man, I just couldn't believe it.
That's but how can you something that's so simple you just so you overlook the twist? Like plain as day. That means we gotta say Luke right here is a false false testimony. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. That's right. You gotta throw it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it's if it's uh, theory is it's correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. It is not. Mm-hmm. Isaiah chapter nine, what uh verse six and seven. When you get there, go ahead. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Wonderful, Counselor, mm. the Mighty God, mm. the Everlasting Father, mm. the Prince of Peace. Mm. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. No end. Upon the throne of David. Upon the throne and of upon, who? Upon the throne of David. Okay. And upon his kingdom. To order it and to establish it with the with judgment and with justice. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Well, you know, brother, when you actually read this, it's not really actually talking about that. It's talking about King Hezekiah. What? 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 You heard that, haven't you? As far as this, this prophecy? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, this is, this is talking about Hezekiah. And I was like, oh, really? Hezekiah, really? I never, you know what I'm saying? Because this is what they say in the group, uh, uh, Jews, was it, uh, Jews versus Christians, whatever like that, but they have it in here. They say this, when we go here, they say this is dealing with Hezekiah. I'm like, well, when was Hezekiah ever called the mighty God or the everlasting bomb or the prince of peace? Like, when? when, when? That's why you know that the enemy gets the devil's mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like I'm like, when? Like How can this be Hezekiah? In there and they can't see the truth. And Hezekiah's <laughs> name is not mentioned one time. <laughs> no, okay. no. I can't no. see Hezekiah like he is. You know, you know in some of the other scriptures I can see the devil. The devil <laughs> but no, but yeah, Hezekiah, yeah, Hezekiah, yeah, Hezekiah, yeah, Hezekiah, Hezekiah, Hezekiah on this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go ahead to Matthew 25. You have a lot of quite a quite a few people. Yeah, that's, that's that. and you, you know me with, with, with the double fulfillments. So if I don't need to see it, it's a problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you try to give it a shot. Yeah. You don't see. Not right there. <laughs> Matthew 25. We're going to read 31 through 34. Matthew 25. 31 through 34. Get there? Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. What is that throne of glory you're going to sit upon? David's throne. Amen. Go ahead. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Mm. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king... Say unto them on the right hand, Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Praise God. Let's go ahead and go to, um, let's go to uh, Ezekiel 34. This will be a glorious day. Yes, it is. Can't even imagine. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> Real, like it's gonna. I sometimes be ponder and I'll be like, Lord, what's, what's it gonna be? Me too. Yeah, I'd be thinking about you it. Said, you said, you said that. That's, yeah. I imagine it's gonna be songs and music. That All of that. Hear, oh yeah. That you've heard never heard. Before. There you go. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Angels singing. Just, All we know is this. So just think about. You know, that's, that's a good experience for everybody. It is. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they can. can, can you, you know, the angels gonna be singing, holy, holy, holy. For thou art the Lord our God Almighty. They're going to be singing songs of him. And, mm-hmm. and probably the whole earth going to be singing songs all in rotation. And, right. and, and in unison, everyone yeah, singing. It said we'll have one language. The whole world is going to be speaking one language. When you read Zephaniah mm-hmm. chapter 3, it ain't going to be Spanish and English and Chinese, Mandarin. It's going to be the whole world. That's something so just a bit brought to my thought. That even though people are going to be in their own nations and stuff, but everybody will speak one language. Yeah, well, yeah. Zephaniah, I'm going to Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3, I'm going to read 8 through 9. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I might assemble the kingdoms to pour upon, thy, to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. He says, For then will I turn to a people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. 
with one, one language. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go so, ahead. Oh no, I was just I was saying one of my uh, one of my friends, uh, his his dad is a, is a bishop, and he had a vision about uh, about heaven and whatnot, and he was trying to uh, he, he plays the guitar, and he heard he heard a tune that was being played in heaven. He said he said that tune it was so good like he, he could not mimic it on his guitar like when he came back from the vision he tried to play it but he couldn't play it. Mm-hmm. So just just think about how it's gonna be in the kingdom. We're going to have the best of the best of everything. Oh, yeah, that's what's right. We thought we heard good stuff. We thought we heard Beyonce singing and all that stuff, but yeah. Beyonce's going to be in the kingdom. Oh, yeah. You know? Abigail's going to be singing in the kingdom, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm telling you. Daddy, on the paper, it had 20, but then you skipped the number 20. Oh, which one? After Ezekiel. That's okay. You should no, skip the numbers. You didn't skip, oh, you didn't skip it. Oh, you went to 20, 22. No, we, we, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I went from 1920, and I put it 21 instead of 22. I got you. But yeah, but yeah, but still the same, though. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. That's meticulous. Good job, though. Yeah, good job, though. Okay. It's good. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, 1 through 5. And then 11 through 24. Go ahead. Because it's almost like a casino. You know, if we'd have read all the way down to like verse 44, whatever like that, almost was the same thing how when Jesus was speaking to them, dealing with to separate the sheep and the goat, it's also going to be this, uh, the same thing as we read here as well. You're going to see it, the comparison. Ezekiel 34, 1 through 5, and then, no, uh, yeah, 1 through 5, and then 11 through 24. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Mm. Mm. See that wow. Mm-hmm. Ye, ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered, because there is no sheep, and they became, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Amen. Let's go to 11 through uh, 24. Wow. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the country, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their foal be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment, and as for you... O oh, my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between the cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of, you, of your pastures, and to have drunk with the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle 
and between the lean cattle because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horn till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey and I will judge between cattle and cattle and I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them even my servant David. He shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Amen. 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 We're going to go to Malachi 3. <laughs> that's verse 10. You know what I mean? You got to go about that. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, that's what they, they don't believe in the Old Testament, but they're throwing they that they throw out of the congregation. Well, that's yeah, that's stuck know. on there. <laughs> they got some nerves. Sin lie at the door. Yeah, this is do it. But he let sin, he allowed that sin yeah. to lie at the door. Then 
he hated his brother, but remember, it, it came from being hatred to where it, it filled his mind. Then he acted on it, and then he actually right. killed him. You know what I'm saying? Like that. His blood, it is. Just, just going back to what you said about him bringing back what was in the beginning and establishing it when he comes back. Mm -hmm. uh, go, going back to the scripture we read earlier, I forgot which one it was. It might have been in Exodus or, or whatever it was, but uh, it says that uh, the Levitical priesthood was going to be a perpetual covenant. Yeah, this is. He was making a yeah. perpetual covenant with them. Right. So that means it, it can never go away. Exactly. So, 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 so the fact that it went away right now, time. it doesn't mean that, that it's he not done away with it. Right. Right. Good, good point. Simple, Excellent simple, point. Simple. Excellent. No, good point. Excellent point. Mm -hmm. It's not even a liar. There you go. No, excellent point. Right. Excellent point. Excellent point. Ezekiel 43. 1 through 7. Go ahead. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Remember in Revelation chapter 1, it said that he had like the voice, when he saw the things of Christ, the of Christ he had a voice like the sound of what? Of, of many waters. Of yeah, exactly. The same way he says, the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like what? Noise of many waters. Go ahead. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision which that I saw, when I came to destroy the city, and the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Shabar, mm -hmm. and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is towards the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever in my holy name, shall the ha house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and go to the next chapter. Next chapter over. And read 7 through 16. Remember, all this is future prophecy now. Mm -hmm. And that's what you, I would, what you just read the stuff that said, neither will they defile anymore, neither mm -hmm. neither the, the kings and stuff, because God is going to still have forms of hierarchy. There will be kings represented. Remember, like yeah, he said yes. But, but it's not going to be, it's not going to right. be Remember, and defiled anymore by yeah. sin. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Please. Please let spread the word and tell us Ezekiel 44, 7 through 16. Go ahead. And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat, and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abomination. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith the Lord God, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. And the Levites are that are gone away from, away far from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the off I'm sorry, and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them, because they ministered unto them before their idols. 
and cause the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Mm -hmm. Therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. Go ahead. But the priest Levites, the son of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. See how he has the Levites now? These Levites are going to be telling people to go whoring after other gods. Now he's going to cleanse them up, and they're going to be teaching them how to serve the Lord God. Now watch this right here. A lot of folks ain't going to like this chapter. These Gentiles ain't going to like this chapter. These strangers ain't going to like this chapter. But hey, this is... Huh? Here it is. Let's go to Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30. But it's in here. So hey, but thus said the Lord, and it's going to come to pass soon. Best believe it. We're going to read this. <laughs> Jeremiah 30, 1 through 20. Jeremiah 30, 1 through 20. Mm -hmm. The word, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's good. Go ahead. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in the book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, O fear, and not of peace. I'm sorry, of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loin, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. See, this is during the um, Great Tribulation, or Jacob's Trouble, that's going to last for three and a half years. And now here it is, Israel's coming out of this now. Israel's coming out of this Great Tribulation, and, watch, and as we come out, watch what's going to happen. Verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Watch what's going to happen now. After we say that, watch what God's going to do to our enemy. Go ahead. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Mm -hmm. Therefore fear not thou, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Mm -hmm. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. All thy lovers have begotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquities, because thy sins were increased. He said, remember, he said, all thy lovers have forgotten thee, and they seek thee. Like, remember, none of the nations ain't even worried about what we're going through now. But well, watch this now. Go ahead. Verse 15. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Mm -hmm. Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquities. 
because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Why? Right. So he says, so since we kept sinning against the Lord our God, he sent us into captivity. But now he's taking us out of captivity. Now watch what we're going to do to our adversaries. Verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Mm. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall, do what? shall go into captivity. Oh. Say it again. Read, wait, read this again. Yeah. Re and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Mm. And they that spoil thee shall Now they're going to be spoiled. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And all that prey upon thee. They're going to be the prey. Because remember, that's what they're doing to us. Go ahead. For I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, we were, saying... We were outcasts. Go ahead. This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. No one cared about all the atrocities stuff we went to. Oh, who can Tell them the... Uh, polar boots up. Uh, Black lives matter. Blue lives matter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Blue no one cares matter. about us. Yeah, but go ahead. A lot of boots, crap, and all, that. Yeah, all that. Go ahead. Verse 18. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent, and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving in the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. And I, I will also glorify them. And they shall not be small. Verse 20. Their children also shall be as a foretime. And their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that oppress them. Amen. Amen. He gonna put it. See, I was just listening and stuff uh, this morning to uh, uh, A.M. Joy. And they were talking about the opioid uh, crisis that's in the oh, country. Yeah. They were talking about the stuff that's in now. During the crack epidemic, they oh, were sending yeah. black women to prison, prison. separating oh, them from their children. children. Mm -hmm. The opioid oh, right. crisis, there's they such compassion and concern. Yep. Nobody's doing yeah. jail time. They oh. need healing. Right. They are sick. sick right. It's a sickness. Different. Right. Yeah. So I go, you see, and I was sitting there and I get angry and I be difference. saying, Lord, you know what? Uh, you said all of them that oppress you, they gonna they be pretty sad. He said, he said the ones he said they sent you to captivity. Oh, they finna go into captivity. They spoiled you. Oh, you gonna spoil them. They but, had you as a prey, they gonna be a prey. But doesn't it talk about the same thing that's um that um is gonna happen when um Jesus returns? This is it. This is it right here. This is it. I'm talking about the um, same people who um, did what they did to him on the cross. Oh, we talking about in it, Revelation. Uh, Revelation 1, mm -hmm. where it talks about um, verse 7. Revelation 1 and 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierce him, and all the kin and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, yeah, like I said, so you got to realize not like I said, he gonna deal. Like I said, he's he's coming to deal with you know mainly um for well, all nations actually. Right. But like I said, but like I said, and those were the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And so when the Gentiles did that, that's why he's dealing with mystery. Remember, because who was Rome? Remember, it was Rome that did that to him. Mm -hmm. right. Who was Rome? Mystery Babylon. He's coming to destroy Rome. Mm -hmm. He's gonna destroy them, and then also the other nations dealing with Edom, Ammon, Moab, uh, 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 Zidon, uh, who else? Uh, Tyre, those Hamite nations in West Africa, like. He's going to deal with, that's why he says all nations are going to come. That's why he says, when he says in uh, Joel chapter 3, he says, um, in Joel chapter 3, verse 6. Joel chapter 3, no, in Joel chapter 3, when he says, um, in verse 6 through 10, he says, The children also of Judah and, of, and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, that you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I'll raise out of them a place where you have sold them and return upon the recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters in the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall proclaim and sell them to the sea bands, to the people far off, for the Lord has spoken. Now watch this. He says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let them the weak say, I'm strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, which means nations, and gather yourself together round about, whether thy, thy mighty ones come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all heathen 
roundabout. So like I said, so he's coming to do like I said, all the ones that did us wrong. He want because see at that time the Valley of uh the Battle of Armageddon, you know all the nations are gonna be there at one time. Right. So when they all gonna be there at one time, what better time is it to whoop every single nation? And that's what he gonna do. He gonna whoop all those nations, show that he the baddest man on the, on the, on the world. And that's when he gonna rule. Isn't that where in the scripture somewhere too, where he calls all of the 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 uh, the, uh, the files of the, the, files of the yeah revelation to come the feast of the yeah, come feast, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah a third of men a third of men gonna be wiped out that's a third, a third. of men and they'll be wiped burying out. people for burying them yeah on top of, yeah yeah for seven months or something this is constantly burying people because this this gonna be a lot of people dying around that time man. Time. It's gonna be a rough time, and, and he gonna be out there sli slicing and dicing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, slicing and dicing. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Jeremiah 33. But see, you know, they're like, "Oh, that's the Old Testament. Don't read that." That's, that's, no, that already came to pass already. Well, when did this come to pass? People look at the Old Testament as meaning the past, yeah. but there's future prophecies. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so many, <laughs> so many of them. You know what I'm saying? Because look, we're still in captivity, so you know right. we, you know that they cut it back. And look, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be in Jerusalem Old chilling. Still being fulfilled. We're supposed to be chilling in Jerusalem, drinking wine, being under our own tree, building our own house, having our own body, being all of that stuff. No war, no none of that stuff. Uh, 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 being the dignitaries upon the earth, having other nations serve us. Like this is in the Bible, but they'll tell you, well, you know, brother, that happened uh, after you came back from captivity under Babylon. Well, how did it happen when we came back from captivity under Babylon? They say when, when we build up the remember when they say when we build up the wall and build up the temple, it was in troublous times. Like it was, it, it was they had to have a sword and stuff on their side because the people were trying to uh, prevent them from building up the things. So like, so that wasn't peace. So what, right, that wasn't peace at the time. Look, the peace is going to come when he comes. Right. And when Jesus comes, he's the prince of peace. there you go. He's the prince of peace. And that's because everyone, the whole world talks about peace, peace, peace. Put down your war pits. Try to disarm this. Do all that. Ain't, nothing, ain't none of that's going to happen. It's getting worse and worse. It's getting yeah. worse and worse until he comes. That's why he says, he said, uh, uh, your, your plowshares and your pruning hooks. He said, do all of that. He says, he says, rage. He said, look, he says, let the weak even say I'm strong. Like even you little small nations. Who don't have a lot of stuff. He said, look, you can even say that you're strong if you want to. But he said, but when he comes, now he says, he says, now you will put away your pruning hooks and your plowshare. He said, because now he said you will no more uh, no more, you will no no more no war anymore when you read Isaiah chapter two. Because it ain't gonna be any war because after he done whooped every darn uh, country, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna be like, man, you messing with Jesus and the Israelites, man. Right. But you're gonna have some Gentiles still gonna wanna do it though. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be in their heart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's when you read it. Ezekiel 38 and 39. God, you may God. Yeah. Like, when they get back, like, all of these, like, the people, like, um, Matthew, Abigail, like, all the people that were in the line before, will they be young? Or will they be well, like, they'll, they'll be in their spiritual bodies. So they'll never age or anything like that. So whenever they come back, when they come back, when the Lord has them come back and doing the first resurrection, they'll put on their spiritual bodies. So I don't, we don't know what age... God's going to have them to be. They might be in their prime age, I don't know, 25. We don't know, though. But we do know that they will never die again. We'll never die again. We'll be put on our, there'll be no weeping, no crying, no mourning, no nothing. No sickness. No, no so sickness or sorrow, no none of that. Even if you're that mature age. Stuff, we right, exactly, yeah. Excellent like said, health and everything. Excellent health. You ain't going to have no folks worry about dealing with high blood pressure, diabetes, and glaucoma, none of that stuff. You, you're going to be in your glorious body. Right. I really want to see Abigail. I know you want to see <laughs> Jeremiah 33. Go ahead. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the king of Judah, which are thrown down by the mount and by the sword, they come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men, whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury. And for all those wickedness, I have hid my face from this city. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, 
and I will build them as at the first, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. You know, that's what we read in, Ex in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, 33 through 39, where he talks about he's going to bring us into the wilderness, he's going to purge out all the rebels. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after that, after you purge them all out, then he's going to allow them to come into the land of Israel. Like I said, like, so all this is uh, taking place. So after you purge out the rebels and all that, now he's going to you know, forgive us of our sins and all that and allow us to come into the land of Israel at, the, at that time. Go ahead. And it, shall, let's see. and it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it thus saith the Lord again there shall be heart heard in this place which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of bride of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever, and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first. So he's going to say it again. Watch this. Go ahead. 12. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Again in this place, which is desolate, without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be inhabit shall be a habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. He said it twice that Jerusalem is desolate, without man and without beast. But who's in Jerusalem right now, though? Edomites. 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 But he's saying, like, look, I don't even. He don't even consider them people. So he's saying that the land right now is desolate. is desolate. He said, until I bring back the captivity of Israel to Judah, that land is desolate. I don't even see them. Just like remember how when he made the covenant with Isaac, but he had Ishmael. He said, Isaac, my son, thy only son. He didn't even recognize who? Ishmael. 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 But he recognized yeah. Isaac. You know what I'm saying? He, rec he recognized us. He's like, look. He said, look, that land is desolate, man. I don't even look. Like, those folks are in there. They in there, but they ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he that's how he looks at that. It's like he said they're dwelling in there, but they're dead to him. Right, yeah, yeah because we're in captivity. Right. That's, that's why he keeps saying, then I'll bring back the captivity of Israel to dwell in your land. But right now the folks in your land they ain't nobody. I don't even look at folks even being in that land. Right. That's deep. Right. That is that's deep, man. Amen. That's our land. Amen. Brother, you read the old testament. I don't know about that. Uh you know, you're like you shouldn't really be saying Jesus that. Came for all of <laughs> okay. God loves everyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, we're all his children. <laughs> we're all God's children. No, we're all God's creation. We're not all God's Religion. children. Amen. Amen. Tell you that. Amen. Go ahead. Read, uh, read verses 13, 13 now. Go ahead, 13. In the cities of the mountain, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, in the land, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, Shall the flocks pass under, pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. Who is that branch of righteousness to grow up unto David? Amen. Amen. Go ahead. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests of Levites want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do, do sacrifice continually. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus saith the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne and with the Levites the priests my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, <coughs> neither the sand of the sea measure, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, 
the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Consider thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord have chosen, he have he have cast he has even cast them off. You know those two families, right? The house of Israel, the house of Judah. Go ahead. Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to do. But you guys remember like the Romans... Uh, have the, have the Lord cast away His people? Like you know, like right, people right. Pe people believe. That's what I'm saying. Like, where can they go in the Scripture where it says like God got rid of Israel and now He dealing with other nations? Yeah. Even when He said He made the new covenant, who He make the new covenant with? He says, I will make a new covenant, not with the ones that I made with the Father when I took them out of Egypt, but I'll make a new covenant with them from the house of Israel and from the house of Judah, where I put my laws and in the heart and in their mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he said, with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, the new covenant is established with. He didn't say, I established my new covenant with the Gentiles and with the strangers and with the Moabites and the Edomites. No. Who did he say? House. Of, and, this, and that's New Testament. That's, that's Hebrews 8 and 8. He said, that's why he said. Like what he said. Verse 25. Thus said the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night and if not appointed the orders of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob. And David, my servant, so that I will not take any of the seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause the captivity to return and have mercy on them. He only he only had a covenant with us, right. and so now all of a sudden he came in the New testament and just and just cast us away now. Right. No, that doesn't it's make like any sense. Twenty-five. I don't have a covenant with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, he's done that. Thank you. He's done that. You can't refute that. You can't refute that. Look at this in Jeremiah 31, 34 through 36. Jeremiah 31, 34 through 36. Look at this says. 35. Jeremiah 31, 35, and 37. Look what it says right here. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinance of the moon, and the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea, which waves therefore roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. And if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me Amen. forever. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven, can, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth be searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. But we see that he can't do that though, right? Because those, how are you going to measure heaven and the seed? You can't. So that's what you know. We will never be cast out. But yeah, but, see, but you know, but see, that's what it's called replacement theology. He done done away with Israel, and now he done got a whole new thing. It's now he established it's the church with the Gentiles. Whoa, where'd you get that from? And who is the church? When you read in Acts seven thirty eight, the church is Israel anyway. But that's replaced. See, they want to do away with Israel and establish everything through these Gentiles. That's not what the scripture says. And you, see, that, you see that because we're gonna talk about it later though, like we're quitting though. That's that's mm -hmm. kind of Israel is really important. Really. But that's a that's lot of church. That's a lot of If you don't know who Israel I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You about to say what I was about to say. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Let's say it. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that if, the, um, if Israel, I mean, if the Gentiles don't come into the covenant of um, Israel, then they're going to be, um, you know, they're passed out. away yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. if us too. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, yeah right, I'll too, right. Yeah. And, yeah, and if you don't know who Israel is, you're going to get all kind of, this prophecy you're going to get mixed up because if you're right. thinking Israel and folks over there in that land, you're going to get thrown off, mm -hmm. not knowing that Israel is still in captivity. So when he say, well, the Jews are home already. Well, hold up. Well, if that's the case, where's King David? Why isn't there where's peace? Well, where, where, right, where's the Messiah? Like, where's that righteous branch under David? Where's that, where's that peace? Where's the lion lying down with the land? All of that. Right. Where is that? If it happened in 1948? And if they don't want to believe According to a uh, future prophecy and stuff like when you said when God established, I mean when the Lord comes back and stuff, they said it's going to be people seeking out the Israelites and stuff, a whole covenant, a whole. Yeah, whole yes, you, yes, yes, it says. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, in uh, Zechariah chapter eight, Zechariah chapter eight, yeah, that's exactly what it says. Hosea thirteen, two more, exactly. 
That's what I said. Like, people don't have, like I said, but that replacement theology, man, is like when they're trying to do away with Israel. Like, that really, that do really. Do away with Israel and make them forget who they are. Like, that too. And make them forget. Why not just do away with, but then make them uh, cease from being a nation. Remember that yeah. that confederate? Who was that, at the top? It's Psalms 83. That, that was always in their heart. That's why they said in the first century, they couldn't wait for the apostles of the Lord we to saw die that, right? stuff. That's right. They couldn't wait for them when to Paul die. When Paul died off in 67 AD, Roman, and then when 70 uh, AD came in, and they ransacked Jerusalem, mm -hmm. well, they said the church moved from Ju uh, Jerusalem, and it went to Rome. And now we're the mother church now. Because right. they, they were so quick. They hijacked. They, were, they hijacked. Yeah. Yeah. And then they then they said, look, we ain't going to call it Israel no more. We're going to name it Palestine. Because they named it Palestine. That's where the name Palestine comes from. It came from the emperor uh, from the emperor's mother, Constantine, where she named it Palestine. It, was no, it wasn't called. It was, it's always been Israel. Yeah, they wanted uh, that the name of Israel no more be remembered. So that's, that's right. why you changed it. Mm -hmm. You changed the name. And then on top of that, then now you got folks over there, the the, the Palestinians, those Arabs, they fighting over that land. You know what I'm saying? Those Edomites no fighting over that land. land. They all fighting over that land that belonged to us. We over here in captivity watching the news like this. Eat, Man, fighting was, over Popeye's uh, chicken sandwich. <laughs> oh, stop it. Now. Oh, my yeah. God. That's what she heard. That's No, they all fight over Popeye's chicken sandwich. Oh, yeah, he don't know. Yeah, oh, that's, that's mad. mad. That's right. Oh, they Instead of worried about the. They fight on it. They said they're going to Popeye's. They said they sell out. I'll show you a thing. They're fighting. 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 They're you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of being at the bottom, man. I want to be the head and not the tail. I know this truth is still a hurtful thing to see how we are as a people. Right. Yeah. And to see the injustice. That's like the, I saw yeah, about this stuff. They were talking about, you know, it's on your mind. The first thing with, with the crack epidemic and stuff, like they said, and stuff, the government was involved in that oh, stuff. Yeah. It was processing and stuff like that. And they're just throwing, they're just separating. Like they talk about the, the the Hispanic people talk about their children being separated at the border. We were separated we, through yeah. slavery. Talk we to were them. separated through the drug yeah. you wore and stuff. Mm -hmm. used to get and then everybody we separated they used a the boy as a harlot. They had harlot. compassion for the Mexicans. They, 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 they had compassion for the Mexicans. They sitting down there marching for them. That's how they they're telling us, oh, that's the past. Y'all need to forget that. Right. Exactly. Get out of here. They said they sold a boy for a heart and they used a boy as a harlot and they sold a girl for wine in Joel 3. So like, oh, oh, you want some wine here? You can, well, oh, you can have this woman. You you can have this woman, so I can get a wine. They use a boy as a harlot. You big and strong. I want you to mate with all these different women, so so they can all come out big and strong like you. You think breeding them? Breathing them. Right, Ooh, God for the boy. That's why I'm these forward to that day. <laughs> that's righteous indignation. Go ahead. Right. Uh, uh, Hosea, Hosea thirteen one through uh, one through fourteen. Hosea. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the time yet. It's coming, though. Yeah. Hosea 13, 1 through 14. Go ahead. When Ephraim spake, trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin no more, and they sin more and more. Mm -hmm. And have made them molten images of their silver, and idols according to their own understanding. All of it, the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. <laughs> Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passeth away, as the shaft that is driven with a whirlwind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. And thou shalt know no God but me. But there is no Savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought, according to their pasture, so they were filled. That they were filled and their hearts was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, and as a leopard by the way will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved with of her whip and will rent the call of her of their hearts. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them 
O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. So he said, we destroyed ourselves, Israel. Why? Right. Because we were going whoring after other gods. Right. Right. But he said, but in me, yeah. he says, there yeah. is thy help. Go ahead. Go ahead. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? <coughs> and thy judges of whom thou saidest, give me a king and princes. Mm. I gave thee a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. So he said he gave us Saul in his anger, but then took away Zedekiah in his wrath. So he gave us his kings. He like, yeah, he said, but he didn't want to do it because remember, he was always want to be our king. So he did it in anger. But then, he did, but then he took away his king in his wrath, though, because you see Zedekiah didn't listen. And I was our last king. So Saul was our first king. Zedekiah was our last king. Go ahead. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plague. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Praise God. Last one, Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3, 1 through 18. Christ, he always wanted to be our king, so he said, mm -hmm. he said, in my anger, I gave you a king, but in my wrath, I took him away. Like, okay, so like I said, you think these kings going to be good to you? They never were. Like I said, God already fought you. <laughs> yeah, he already but, think about, but see, the thing about it, what I look at when Christ, he, when he, he gives the, uh, a man and stuff, the, uh, uh, I mean, when they were crying for a king and stuff, they were thinking in their own minds and stuff, God just be showing them and stuff through his, uh, uh, in his, in his, uh, in all of his wisdom and everything. Okay, this is what you say that you want. Sure. And so are yeah, you sure? Yeah. Okay, and then after that, when it all lays out before them and stuff, and then they realize all the time, man, we should have been. There you go. We were good with God. Matter that's what's what's that? Like. That's exactly what happened. I think he um he he asked them, you know, if they wanted this, if this, if you have these kings, this is going to happen. They said yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah that was that was scripture. Yeah, that was scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. The book. Well, he asked, asked yes. them, you sure you want all that? Then they did. They said yeah. Go ahead, Jeremiah 3, 1 through 18. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Mm. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, mm. yet return, unto, return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lain with. And the ways, let's see, in the ways hast thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a hoarse forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. Amen. Is that, he said, a whore for it. That's like a brazen look. Go ahead. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the guide of, of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Mm -hmm. Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen? That which backsliding Israel have done, she is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there have played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto unto me. But she turned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it, mm. and I saw when for all the causes were backsliding Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a deal of divorce, but her <coughs> treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Mm. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stock. And yet for all her treacherous sister Judah has not turned unto me with her whole heart, but fiendly saith the Lord. 
Yeah. Garbage yeah. like just faint. It's only like in pretense. Like yeah, we don't say you serve him, but they didn't really serve him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we're doing the same way now. Look how many of us are serving. Roman Christianity and Islam and, and Buddhism and, and all these different things. Like we're serving, we're serving these other gods. You know, something like that. He's like, look, we're supposed to be serving him and only him, but we're not. Go ahead, verse uh, eleven. And the Lord said unto me, The backslide in Israel have justified herself. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backslide in Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord. I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. Mm. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, shall, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time... They shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Amen. But I, Amen. Okay. Amen. But look at this, though. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 8 real quick. I'm going to show you something what uh, Lil' C was saying. 1 Samuel chapter 8. This will be the last one. First Samuel 8. Number 7 verse 9. It says, Now therefore hearken unto me their voice, how be it, Yet protest solemnly unto, unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. He said, okay, I'm going to show you the manner of the king that shall reign over you. And Samuel told the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to, for himself, and his chariots to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots, and he will appoint him captains over, over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them in the ear and adhere to the ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, instruments of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and all your uh, olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your seeds, and your vineyards, and give them to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your uh, men servants, and your maid servants, and your gulliest young men, and your asses and put them on his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and he shall be his. That will be his servants. He shall and ye shall cry out in the day because of your king, which he have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. You're like, okay, you want a king? He gonna do all this unto you, yeah, and you will be crying out to me. And yeah, like saying nineteen. What did he say? Was it nineteen? Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and said, Nay. But we will have a king over us. <laughs> we want a king. We want that king. That we will also be like all nations. All these things that you. That's yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I remember you said when you said I was like that's. Let's come back, man. I remember reading that. Uh -huh. wow. So he he was letting them know all the stuff that's going. He was letting he was, he was letting them he was letting them know if you have a king you're gonna have a hard taskmaster. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Before, but not like him. Now he was loving it. He was loving the guy, but they still said no. We don't want your goodness. Give us a king. <laughs> Because see, like with God, see that was a, that's amazing. Like when, when when they wanted the Lord, all they had to do was be able and stuff to give the tenth to the Lord that and was stuff it. like that. And to, he fought to for you and all that he stuff. He fought for you. <laughs> you up there talking about he's uh, they, uh, they 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 sitting up there and he's getting your your chariots and stuff, and building war. I mean <laughs> weapons of, a, of of destruction and stuff like that. You had it made with had God. Made. You had it As made with him. But they said, no, we want to be like other nations. Yeah, we want to be we like other nations. They have kings. Yeah. yeah. And you know that's us because they didn't 
just said King. They said they it was probably weren't even listening when he said that. Thank you. Right. Even, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We want to say. It couldn't have been. been. If he said, he said all this, we'd have been like, whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. They probably wanted it. Yeah. It had to be. They wouldn't listen to all the hardships that they were going to go through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to hear all of that. Uh-uh. I want a king. So we got some understanding. In Jesus' name. Oh,